corporate profits down 20 to 30 percent. Normally, I would say 40 or 50 in a hard landing, but this recession is so anticipated. I don't think a lot of corporations are going to be caught with their pants down, which is how normally you lose a lot of money as you're not prepared for something that happens. Um, commercial real estate, you know, I'm not informing anybody in this room of something I don't know, but office is a problem. It would have been a problem anyway, but, but change of lifestyle and COVID makes it an even bigger problem. Financing rates going up make it a problem. I'm worried about credit tightening the next six to nine months. Obviously the banks um, are going into an economic period that if in fact we get a recession, their balance sheets are already impaired, not from where they usually lose money, which is loans, um, from the fact that the Fed convinced them that they're going to keep rates to zero until 24. Uh, so they bought a bunch of treasuries yielding one or two percent and now they're carrying them at five. So, so their balance sheets are impaired. But if we get in a recession, uh, then the real losses comes, which is stuff like credit cards, commercial real estate, that kind of stuff. So those would be my, my worries. In the ever-shifting landscape of finance, the legendary investor Stan Druckenmiller has unfurled a tapestry of strategic moves, signaling an urgent note of caution about the economy. With a storied history of managing George Soros' quantum fund, Druckenmiller's unease has materialized into palpable shifts within his formidable portfolio. As a harbinger of economic concern, he candidly admitted, and I'm quoting, I started to get really nervous, aligning his sentiments with influential figures such as Bill Ackman and Bill Gross. In a surprising twist, Druckenmiller, known for his keen foresight, has maintained bearish positions on longer-term bonds due to apprehensions about escalating government debt issuance. New report claims America's national debt has topped $33 trillion. About a third of that has been added just over the last five years. After a huge bump in COVID spending, the nation's current debt is now around $33 trillion. That's closing in on $100,000 each owed for every man, woman, and child in America. If you stacked up the full debt of the United States in $100 bills, you could make not one, not two, but 13 piles of cash as tall as the Washington Monument. Yet, in an unexpected move, he has initiated bullish bets on two-year notes, a departure from his stance since 2020. Druckenmiller, foreseeing a potential 20 to 30% decline in corporate profits and a subsequent real estate downturn, remains vigilant, urging us to be open-minded about something breaking as corporations and households prepare to refinance in the coming years. In a candid interview, Druckenmiller didn't mince words, criticizing Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen for what he deems the biggest blunder in the history of the department. His concern intensifies as he predicts that if interest rates stagnate, the government's interest expense could reach 7% of GDP by 2043. With a net worth of $9.9 .9 billion, Druckenmiller's strategic shifts and warnings cast a ripple effect across the financial landscape. 
Join us as we unravel the intricacies of his latest portfolio adjustments, looking deeply into his top three holdings that potentially navigate the complex web of economic forecasts and market dynamics orchestrated by one of the most influential figures in finance. Let's tune in to what exactly has caught Truck and Miller's bullish vibe. All of AI is not going to make it through whether we have a recession or not because they haven't separated the wheat from the traf shaft yet. But I do believe, um, unlike crypto, I think AI is real. It's probably, it could be as transformative as the internet. It, it's a huge thing. And I, I think I've argued publicly that if staples can go up in price in a recession, why can't a company like NVIDIA, if they go up, if they go up, if their orders and earnings go up 70% in a hard landing, which is what I think would probably be happening, it's not clear that me that NVIDIA goes down despite the lofty valuation level. History has proved that if you do, if you have very good earnings in a recession and they're sustainable, if they're not, the market somehow figures it out. Those stocks will do just fine. So um, we have some longs, we have some shorts, and uh, the AIs have sort of dominated the long portfolio for five or six months. In the intricate realm of Stanley Druckenmiller's investment universe, a portfolio of 41 stocks unveils a captivating narrative, with the spotlight squarely on NVIDIA Corporation, ticker symbol NVDA, being the top holding with an impressive 13.65% of the portfolio as of the third quarter of 2023. What's making waves in this compelling saga is NVIDIA's spectacular performance, catapulting it to the forefront with two standout earnings beats this year. NVIDIA, akin to a favorite surf spot for investors, justifies its substantial premium through a breathtaking pace of revenue and earnings growth. Druckenmiller, a maestro in reading the market's waves, acknowledges the unique rules of investing in stocks with towering valuations, drawing a parallel to the exhilarating world of big wave surfing. Amid the daunting valuation, NVIDIA's management, led by the indomitable CEO Jensen Huang, has earned the trust and benefit of the doubt from shareholders. Huang's consistent ability to outperform consensus expectations, as witnessed in the last two earnings report, has propelled NVIDIA to a realm where fundamentals take a back seat to the monumental wave of growth. As we approach the precipice of another earnings report, the question looms, how big is the earnings wave that NVIDIA is riding? The answer lies in whether analysts have caught up with or exceeded the company's breakneck pace. This, Druckenmiller suggests, is akin to gauging the size of a wave in big wave surfing, a significant juncture with the potential for exhilarating highs or a wave of disappointment. Setting aside the trepidation of extreme valuation, let's break down the bullish case for NVIDIA, simplifying the intricate landscape. Starting with advanced chips. NVIDIA's chips enable parallel computing, unlocking enhanced computing power. Competitive advantage. The firm boasts a substantial lead in research and development, creating a formidable competitive edge. AI dominance. NVIDIA's chips are integral to high-intensity computing and AI models, particularly large language models. Financial strength. The company's return on invested capital is notably higher, with a pristine financial condition and a negligible chance of bankruptcy. And growth opportunities. NVIDIA's fabulous model opens avenues for growth and margin expansion, aligning with major future trends like AI, autonomous driving, and the metaverse. Next up. Coupang Inc., ticker symbol CPNG, stands as the second largest holding in Stanley Druckenmiller's portfolio, boasting an impressive 12.75% weight as of the third quarter of 2023. Despite recent market turbulence, Coupang's alluring investment thesis holds strong, offering a unique blend of innovation and growth potential in the dynamic world of e-commerce. Following the release of Q3 results, Coupang witnessed a temporary sell-off, a response possibly amplified by prevailing risk-off sentiments. Yet, this downturn is a momentary blip for a company that, in my estimation, is now valued at an attractive 12 times forward free cash flows. While it may not have an impregnable moat like Amazon, Coupang's expansive user base of 20 million active customers positions it as an undervalued gem. 
Coupang, a leading South Korean online marketplace, distinguishes itself through an easy-to-use interface, offering a wide array of products, including electronics, apparel, groceries, and household essentials. What truly sets it apart is its groundbreaking logistics and delivery strategy, featuring an internal system of fulfillment centers that enable swift same-day or next-day delivery across South Korea. The company's commitment to enhancing customer experiences and innovative solutions underscores its promising future prospects. With a 14% year-over-year growth in active customers, the fastest since the pandemic in 2021, Coupang's expansion into new markets, particularly Taiwan, has garnered positive reception, with the app on track to become the most downloaded in Taiwan for 2023. However, like any company, Coupang faces both positive and negative considerations. On the positive side, its revenue growth rates remain attractive, sustaining a percentage in the mid-tens of compound annual growth rate. Yet, challenges emerge in the form of an intensifying competitive landscape from emerging e-commerce players like Tmall and AliExpress. The company's profitability profile is a nuanced matter, grappling with the optimization of its logistics network, continuous investments in merchant acquisition, and the balancing act between growth initiatives and cost efficiency. Despite temporary strains on margins, Coupang remains confident in its long-term guidance of over 10% adjusted EBITDA and corresponding free cash flows. As we navigate Coupang's journey, one cannot ignore its impressive performance in generating free cash flow. Previously estimated at $2 billion by the end of 2024, the company has already reported $1.9 billion on a trailing basis. With its unwavering determination and growth prospects, a revised estimate of $2.2 billion in free cash flow for 2023 positions Coupang as a compelling investment opportunity. Priced at 12 times forward free cash flow, the company's mid-teen growth rates and resilience make it a standout choice for investors seeking a blend of innovation and financial strength in the e-commerce landscape. Microsoft Corporation, ticker symbol MSFT, stands as the third largest holding in Stanley Druckenmiller's portfolio, commanding an impressive 11.53% weight as of the third quarter of 2023. Unquestionably, Microsoft is unrivaled in its market position, with a blend of growth opportunities, resilient revenue streams, and visionary leadership that set it apart in the technology landscape. The company's diversified portfolio spans consumer and enterprise software, cloud computing, artificial intelligence solutions, and consumer electronics. Currently trading at approximately $375, Microsoft's five-year price history reflects a trajectory of consistent growth, a trend further reinforced by its recent Q1 fiscal year 24 earnings report. Revenue, $56.5 billion, up 12% year-over-year. Profit. $22.3 billion, up 27% year-over-year. Notably, Microsoft's cloud business emerged as the largest revenue driver, growing by an impressive 19% year-over-year. The strategic foresight of CEO Satya Nadella, who took the helm in 2014, has propelled the commercial cloud business from generating less than $5 billion in annualized revenue to a staggering $127 billion as of Q1 fiscal year 24. Cloud's ascendancy, accounting for 56% of total revenue, is characterized by robust annualized revenue growth and expanding gross margins from 59 to 72% since Q1 of fiscal year 19. With Nadella expressing confidence in the long-term cloud opportunity, Microsoft Cloud positions itself as a best-in-class competitor in a market with strong structural tailwinds and a massive total addressable market. Beyond cloud, Microsoft's revenue mix is strategically diversified, with substantial contributions from Office products and services, Windows, server products, Xbox, LinkedIn ads, and more. The enterprise-level focus, recurring revenue model, and product durability contribute to Microsoft's exceptional resilience in the market. Microsoft's foray into AI integration, exemplified by Copilot, promises transformative impacts on productivity across professional and consumer products. GitHub Copilot, currently used by over a million paid users, reflects a fundamental shift in developer productivity, completing coding tasks 55% faster. 
As Copilot extends to Office 365's 345 million paid members, Microsoft's league-leading position in AI integration becomes even more pronounced, building a widening moat for future growth. The company's growth forecasts, backed by strong projections from Wall Street analysts through 2028, underscore Microsoft's position as a powerhouse in the tech industry. With cloud, Copilot, and Office synergies contributing to these forecasts, Microsoft remains a beacon of innovation and growth, making it an enticing prospect for investors looking to navigate the future of technology.